Welcome to the DCC Sermon Podcast. We hope you enjoy this message by Pastor David Hilton. To find more information and resources on this message, you can visit dcctx.church backslash media. Hey, if you got your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Back that down a little bit. Last week, we we seen how Jesus approached the issue of being a disciple. And, um, and that's one willing to follow. And it says he will make us fishers of men. And we miss that part a lot of times about the making. And uh, the call is to follow. And that is an invite to be made to be formed, squeezed into, chosen, to be elected, to be selected. That word call is invite. The word chosen is elect, selected. And that's for a task. Uh, There's an assignment that we have. It wasn't just to get us to heaven, but it's to get us back to who God made us to be and to find out who He is. And we find out who we are by finding out who he is. And, uh, and, 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 and the biggest thing is to bring thy kingdom come. And, and we miss that a lot of times that the mandate on man has never changed. Church changed, but the mandate on man has never changed. And that's to occupy and that's to keep and cultivate and to multiply. And you've got to occupy to do that and not just sit back waiting to go to heaven. And, um, and I've kind of been on this deal and, uh, about a lot of the scriptures that we say and we got them on the walls, and, you know, and, but we never put much thought into them. And uh, Jeremiah 20, line 11 is one of those. So we're going to look at it today. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you, Declares the Lord. And when, when he says declare, he's already declared good things over us. And so you got to keep that in mind. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. And that word calamity is adversity, distress, heavy, grief to give you a future and a hope. And then we always stop there. We always repeat that. We always hoot, holler, wave the hanky and do all that. Look at verse 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You, and you think for a minute there, those, may be, those aren't the same thing. Seek me, search for me. Two totally different things. Because the word seek there, it's to ask. It's to inquire of. It, it's an action on our part where it's, uh, it's almost like a, uh, where, where you're trying to study. That's what that word acquire, ask. That, that's what that word means. And the word search, it's, <laughs> check this out, to follow, to pursue. What did Jesus say? Come, follow me. Right? Follow. And so he says, and you will seek me. You'll ask. You'll re- it, it, you'll, you, it'll require some action, some digging some worshiping, some reading, some studying. And and in that word seek, it actually says worship. With all your heart. And I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. How many times when you've come, you hear people, probably ain't been y'all, 
but you say, man, you hit bottom. You hit bottom. Y'all ever heard that? Bottomed out. Hit bottom. You ain't got nowhere to go. It's like you've been in exile. Right? And then all of a sudden, man, God begins to open the doors and you begin to start seeing it because it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call. See, there's something on the inside of us on our way down. We are searching and looking for something, but we don't ever find it until we hit bottom because that's what gets us on the right track that he has declared. Come on, are y'all with me? See, God knew that if he left us with no opposition, nothing coming against us, we'd never look for him. So what did he do? Look what he did in Deuteronomy. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. You've got, you've got to see this. See, and when, you, when you put all this together and you realize that what God did was for our benefit and how much he loves us, and to get us on the right track. Deuteronomy 30. And you'll have to look in Deuteronomy. I, I tell you what. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 1 real quick and let me show you something. Chapter 1 verse 36. <clears throat> look in verse 34. We'll start there. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words. And he was angry and took an oath saying, Not one of these men, this evil generation, shall, shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers. Except Caleb, the son of Jephthah, he shall see it. And to him and to his sons, I will give the land on which he has set foot because he has followed the Lord fully. It says he has pursued Fully. He has followed the Lord fully. Not because he said a prayer and received, come on. It says because he followed. Joshua and Caleb are the only two that followed the Lord fully and received what was promised. Because they pursued after. They were willing to believe God. They were going to do. And so all those people that came out of Egypt, Three million something people and two went into the promised land because they followed the Lord fully. And that word fully means to accomplish, confirm, and fulfill. When David died, here's what it said. It said he died fulfilling the number of his days. Fulfilling the number of his days. Did David mess up? Sure he did. David committed adultery, had a guy killed. Come on. But yet he followed God fully. And it says he fulfilled the number of his days. Why? Because there was always something putting David back on track. There was always something, you know, opposition. Listen, when David messed up, you talk about opposition, it sent a ripple through his house. And David says, surely I've sinned. Because there was something coming against him to tell him, you messed up, boy. You're out of line. You're out of line. And, and, that, old, and that old deal <clears throat> about the footprints in the sand, where... Two footprints, and then all of a sudden it's just one footprint. And this, and it's so nice, it sounds good. Every grandma has it in the bathroom, and it says, That's when the Lord was carrying me. <clears throat> no, that's not how it works. That's your own dang set of footprints leading you off the path. Jesus is still over there on the good road going, <clears throat> I'm over here. And we got to get back over there where he's at. 
Let me show you. Deuteronomy 30. <laughs> I know that just grates on some every time. I, the first time I heard Dave Morrison say it, I was like, Dave, that's scary, man. Everybody loves that. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. This is God telling His people, See, look, I've set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. There it is right there. He set before us life and prosperity, death and adversity. He gave us, he gives us, he loves us enough to give us a choice. But then here's what he says. In that, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, follow him, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply. In other words, to be able to fulfill the mandate that is on your life. That's pretty simple, isn't it? And so then look what he says. <clears throat> and the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land where you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess and he goes on to say, choose life. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Now, the problem is, is we think that those two roads run parallel to each other. They don't. They run opposite of each other. That's why when, when you're walking and doing and following, man, you're, you're steadily growing in the Lord. But when you're on that other path, it is, it is going totally opposite direction and it gets wider as you go and it gets easier to follow that path. It's producing death. It's not producing life. So you can be walking thinking you're blessed, but the whole time you're drying up and dying on the inside. And you're, and you, you've got stuff. Come on, you got stuff. You got a house. You got AC. You got a car. You got a job. You got a career. But something's missing. Come on, y'all hearing me? And it's so subtle. And that's how the enemy works. It's so subtle when, when we're just we're think we're going down this road thinking we're all right, and we're getting further and further away from being all right. And then we find out, we get down there, and it's empty. You ain't got no friends. You ain't got no, you're you just satisfied. You're frustrated. You're, come on. And so we, we figure out, wait a minute, something's missing. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's all these vices along the way. See, when you go down that road, of cursing. Listen, you can exit at several exits. Some of them, you get off one exit, it's just a hamster wheel. You're going round and around, just going through the motions. Just going through the motions. Come on, you get to some, that's a dead end. It, does that make sense? See, God knew what would happen if He just left us with no pushback. That we'd never seek or search for Him. See, that's why we had to have the law so we'd know what keeps us from God. That sin, missing the mark. See, he set two obvious paths before us to follow. And it leads us to him to find out who he created us to be. And that's what's amazing. And that's how we fulfill our purpose. Fulfill the number of our days. Look in Psalms 139. <clears throat> Are y'all good? Y'all not? 
<laughs> I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> Psalms 139. Listen, I know this ain't easy. <clears throat> because what happens is it puts, a, it, puts, it puts a demand on us. A demand on us to follow the right path. And it's not a big, it's not going to get any wider. That's the, <laughs> that's the deal. Psalms 139. This is David. He said, verse 16, Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. God has ordained. Look, in that word, when you look that word ordained up, here's what it means. Through the squeezing into shape, the molding into form. Come on, is that good or what? To determine, to determine the resolution. Listen, when we begin to follow God, God begins to start forming and squeezing. We've always said, y'all heard me say it a hundred times, God squeezes us into our anointing. And so as we're walking and we're following God and we're finding out who He is, man, there's a molding, there's a shaping going on in our life. And He's working on the inside. Not, we, religion loves to dress up the outside. Change the outside, get you to doing things. And, you know, no, God's working on the inside, working it on attitudes, working it on uh, things that we all, when we was getting off the exits on that other road. Come on. So here's the deal. <clears throat> These two roads that are before us. They're choices that we make. So what happens is, is when we're on these, when we're on the roads, the issue becomes what rob, robs us of the blessings, prosperity, and is our choices. Because he's already declared future and hope, Right? So we're always got these choices before us to make. And so that's, what's rob, that's what robs us of our future and our hope, right? John 10, 10. <clears throat> Look what it says. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and might have it abundantly. How many of y'all for years have heard, any, anybody's been in church for any amount of time, this is how we usually hear this verse quoted. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? That's how we've heard it for years. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But here's the problem with that. <clears throat> it says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, hang on to me here. Hang on just a minute. The reason it doesn't say devil is is because the devil ain't got no power over you until you give it to him. Come on. Until the choices you start making, until the choices you start making to be offended, to be bitter, to be unforgiving. Come on. To quit following. See, the devil can't curse you because you've been blessed. But what happens is when we make the wrong choices, we put ourselves in the road to cursing and death. Balaam was hired to curse Israel. And he went to stand up and curse Israel. God said, you can't, because I already blessed them. Balaam had to go back and tell the king, I can't curse them. 
What do you mean? I hire, I'm going to hire you to curse them. Well, I can't curse them because God already blessed them. And who can do? Come on, are y'all with me? See, we've also called it opening up doors, right? See, <clears throat> when we're on that road going totally opposite away from God, then we start opening ourselves up to more and more of letting the devil just run roughshod over us. What did God tell them in Deuteronomy 28? You're the head, not the tail. And the devil's always trying to make us the tail so he can wag us. But we're the head, not the tail. And God also said, I'll put the enemy under your feet. See, you have all these things that God has declared over your life. And we've got to choose the right path in which to walk on. Because there's a thief out there trying to rob us of what's been declared over our life. And when we get so arrogant and prideful that we won't repent and we say, well, I, it's, it's about me. Well, okay, it's going to be about you. Go on. Go on, make it about you. And man, we just, we, it's about you so much that you get so far down the road. Come on, are y'all with me? Matthew 19. Well, that's all Old Testament, preacher. <laughs> I always like those. <laughs> Everything in the Old Testament, you'll find it in the New Testament. It just backs it up. Everything in the Old Testament was written for our instructions on what not to do. <laughs> Matthew 19, verse 16. <clears throat> Behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And he said to him, why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good, but if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love the Lord your God as yourself. The young man said to said to him, all these things I've kept, what am I still lacking? Now, we've, man, we've heard these story about the rich young ruler for years. Read it, preached it, years. And it's amazing to me how God points out a few things. This rich cat comes up to Jesus and says, what must I do to have eternal life? <laughs> and it's just like Jesus, he just kind of skimmed over, just didn't even put much thought into, or it, it's almost like he was really avoiding the question because what he asked really wasn't that big of a deal. Because what he asked wasn't the issue. Here this guy comes up to Jesus. He's got it made, man. There's people coming to Jesus. They ain't got nothing. They're oppressed. They're, they're sick and tired of religion. They're sick and tired of the government, the politics between the Jews, the Romans. They're, they're sick and 
tired of all of it and it's always just right on the edge of civil disobedience all the time and yet here this cat comes up on his slick back donkey and he comes riding in what must I do to have eternal life this cat ain't hurting for nothing and there's people out there begging and pleading and trying to just drum up a two fish and a come on are y'all hearing what I'm saying Jesus says, why are you asking me what's good? Cat, you got everything. You got a house. You got a donkey to ride on. You got servants. You got, you got all of this stuff. You are comfortable living in security. You've got, come on. Y'all starting to get this picture now? And he comes up and he, you're a good man. Why are you asking me what's good? <laughs> the issue wasn't heaven. And Jesus didn't make it about that. But this rich young ruler, his focus was on eternal life because there was something missing in his life and he knew it. Come on, y'all with me now. This guy had everything but yet something was missing. Then Jesus confronted the issue that he wasn't talking about, but that issue that something was missing. And look what he says. And he said, and he, the young man said to him, all these things I've kept, what am I still lacking? Look, what am I still lacking? What? You got it all, cat. What do you mean, what am I still lacking? Here's what Jesus said. If you wish to be complete. He said, if you wish to be complete. You can have everything, be walking, doing exactly everything you want to do, not have a worry, not have a care in the world. All your bills are paid. You get that, come on. And Jesus says, if you want to be complete, here's what you're going to need to do. Go sell everything you got and give it to the poor and follow Look what he says. And follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieved, for he was one who owned much property. Listen, everybody wants to go to heaven. <laughs> Nobody wants to die to get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's not the issue of our life. The issue is not to get to heaven. The issue is to follow God and be made complete. And that is a squeezing and a mashing. I'll never forget sitting right across eating lunch with Donnie Gay. Won the world eight times in the bull riding. Eight times. Can you imagine? Winning the world in the bull riding eight times. And he looked right at me and Wendy, and he said, I climbed that mountain eight times, and he said, there was nothing up there. Eight gold buckles, and still was not complete. That's sobering. Then it wasn't long he got saved. But eight times, you'd think, man, I'm pinnacle at the top of the world. Still, still nothing. Jesus knows that this fallen world tries to ingrain us with false ideals of truth. I'm telling you, man, we're, we're right now, between now and next year election, y'all are going to hear some of the dumbest stuff. You have me and... <laughs> Me and Manuel was on our way home from Kansas yesterday, and Joe Biden, he says, uh, what, what did he say, man? He said, uh, 
uh, he said, hold on, I'll put it together here in a minute. It was the funniest thing because, I, I mean, they just say stuff to say stuff. He said, he said, uh, yeah, he, he said, yeah, he said, oh, we're going to believe the truth, not the facts or something. I mean, so, it's something dumb like it. it's the same thing. It's the same darn thing, truth and facts. And I was like, what, wait a minute, what? what? I mean, and they just say some of the, it's going to be some of the most ridiculous stuff that we're going to hear, and it's going to be frustrating. It already is, and we ain't even close. But I'm telling you, don't let that get you off course. Because we still have to be responsible. We still have to do what we got to do. But I'm telling you, when, 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 when people can't form, I'm telling you, there's, there's no greater illusion that the devil is doing than right now. Because when a human being can't form the truth that life starts at conception, you can't have my vote. If you can't make that simple thought in your mind and you have to debate when life, when God created, when we just read that God knew David before he was even formed, come on, when you don't know life, you don't get my vote. I don't care who you are. Male, female, yeah, yeah, they can't even, I mean, we got a whole debate going on now of what should I call you? Uh, 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 how are you feeling? Are, are you feeling like a man, a woman today? Are you feeling like, uh, what, what are you, X, Y, or Z? That's what we heard. I was like, what? You, you want me to call you X because you don't know if you're Y or Z? Let me clear this mess up for you, buddy. Male or female? Two. How would you like me to address you? <laughs> I wish somebody would ask me that question. Please, somebody one day ask me that question. Come on, that's how ridiculous what we live in. And so don't tell me it's not going to get frustrating. Because I'm, it's, it's going to get there. So we have to understand, though, that God is never going to deviate from what He's already declared. Because He's already declared it, He's already said it before us, life and prosperity. And if we will follow Him, we'll continue to walk in life and prosperity, welfare, a future, and have a hope. No matter what we see or hear, going down away. Come on, y'all with me? Y'all still here? <laughs> that word complete means a labor and growth, mental and moral character to set out for a definite point or goal, a result. Immediate, ultimate, prophetic purpose. That's what Jesus told him. He said, do you want what's been prophesied, declared over your life? That's what he said. Do you want what you were designed and ordained to have? That's pretty powerful, y'all. I mean, when you start chewing on that for a little while, he was saying, do you want to be made whole again? Do you want to be made complete? Do you want to accomplish what you were made for? Come on, I say yes. I, one of our prayers has always been, Lord, help me to fulfill the number of my days. I started praying that before I was married 34 years ago. Lord, I want to fulfill the number of my days. Lord, I want to do, uh, have I made all the right decisions? Have I done everything right? Heck no. 
But guess what? You keep following. God keeps making. God keeps molding. God keeps getting us to that because He knows exactly what He's called us to do. Come on. And in that, it's fulfilling. You're not living on pins and needles. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Am I, you know, is this my purpose? Is this my destiny? Is this, am I going to do this? Am I going to make it? Am I going to... Come on. Listen, the enemy wants you to bite off on you. ain't never going to win. You're not, you're, you're not ever going to get out of your mama's house. You're not ever going to get out... Come on. You're not ever going to have a good job. You're not going to find a man. You're not going to find a woman. I mean, and it just, the devil keeps trying to get us to buy into all of that. And God says, no, I've already declared a future and a hope for you. And then the enemy starts trying to get us to buy into our past. God doesn't, God can't use us. God, come on, are y'all with me? And what happens is, here's what the devil loves to do. The devil loves to get us to start settling. Because what the enemy's always going to do is he's going to run a counterfeit in front of you. And always try to get you to bite at that counterfeit. Choose this, choose this, choose this, choose this. Are y'all still with me? James 1, 4 says, And let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And you, and you look and you go, perfect and complete, that's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. The word perfect is, in the, in the Greek, is, it's, it's 50, 46, which is, that's a Strong's number. You can look it up. And that's the word. That's the same as the word "complete," ultimate prophetic purpose. But the word "complete" here says whole in every part, a heritage, an inheritance, a purpose. See, there's two things at work here. When he says that you may be complete. Perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Those are two different things working us towards getting made whole and fulfilling our purpose. Does that make sense? It's not redundant he's saying the same thing, perfect and complete. What he's saying is, is that it, we, we, we're being made whole back to what we were created to be so that we can fulfill the prophetic purpose on our life. Come on, does that make sense? But listen, and again, I'll say it over and over and over again. I'll wear this thing. I will ride this thing to the ground, pull the saddle off, get on another one, ride that one to the ground. You weren't saved just to go to heaven. You were saved to get heaven in you. And you're not going to do that just by saying a prayer repeating a prayer after somebody and then sitting down doing nothing because you're not occupying, you're not following, you're not doing, you're not pursuing, you're not going after, come on. See, there's action on our part that must take place. Salvation is absolutely free. You don't have to earn that. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to come up here, light candles, say rosaries. You, ain't, you don't have to do any of that. You don't, have to go, you don't have to go sell all your stuff. He didn't have to go sell all his stuff. But if he wanted to be made complete, there were some things holding him back. Come on. And, and let me tell you something. He go the disciples, they were like, wait a minute, we left everything to follow you. He said, yeah, and guess what? You're going to get it all back in this lifetime. You'll get every bit of that back and then some. So see, it ain't that we're, I, and you don't have to take a vow of poverty. Oh man, I hate that deal. God's, okay, well, if you want to be part of it, that's not what I got for you. I got a future and a hope and prosperity for you. 
I don't know where this deal come in to play about you got to be poor to preach the gospel. <laughs> I can't find it. But I do see a lot of where he says, I want you to be blessed. And yeah, you may give up because it may be it's got you. And that's the whole deal with the rich young ruler. It had him. He didn't have it. And as soon as he got control of it, he'd have got it back. Come on, are y'all with me? And one thing that I've been amazed at in the body of Christ is a lack of endurance. First, second Peter, real quick, I'm fixing to be done. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 says, Now for this reason also applying all diligence in your faith. Come on, diligence in your faith. Supply moral excellence. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control. In your self-control, perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. Look what it says. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing... They render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many times have we seen people say the prayer, sit down and never work on any of that? And so they have no faithfulness, no commitment, no endurance, no, come on, no self-control. And so and they're, they're going nowhere, so they become useless. So they're not fulfilling, they're not complete. I'm telling you, there's people coming to church, been in churches all their life. They're frustrated. And they, but I've said the prayer, I'm going to heaven. And I, but come on. See, that, that's where we're at. We, we, we've got a whole whole society out there that's got this skewed misconception of what church is. And they don't know that, man, I have to follow. I need to follow. There's things in me that I need to work on. Self-control. <laughs> you know? Man, how many people need to see somebody today's time walking with self-control, with endurance, with steadfastness when we've got a society right now that is so confused? Come on. Wouldn't it be nice to see Christians who aren't worried about the end of the world? The sky's falling. Come on. Y'all with me? To see a people who aren't walking around mad at each other all the time, but loving each other. Come on. Look what he says. For if these qualities, for he who lacks these qualities is blind, short sighted having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his inviting you, about his calling and choosing, his selecting you. For as long as you practice these things, see, it's practice. We got to practice those things. You will never stumble. For in this way, <laughs> there it is. For in this way, in which way? On this way of blessings and life and prosperity. For in this way, come on, does that make sense? In this way, not in trying to run parallel with it, not in just trying to do good or being good or just playing church, but in this way, doing all those things, being diligent, supplying moral excellence and, and working on our character and trying to get godly character and all this trying to, come on, in this way, 
Look what it says. Oh, man, y'all are going to love this. For in this way, you'll never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Okay, now if we're dead, why do we need the abundance of this eternal kingdom supplied to us? We don't. If we're, if we're dead, we got everything we need. But if we're walking in this way and we're doing what God says, see I have set before you today life and prosperity. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that I bring life abundantly. What? Abundantly. You look up that word in the in the in the Greek or even in the Webster dictionary. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. How many times do we just sit back and just say, Lord, I just need a little old spot over here? And I God says, Man, I got more than a little spot for you. And we want to hammer Joel Osteen for preaching about how blessed you are. I can't stand when I hear preachers talking about Joel Osteen being softballing. You know, no, he's just trying to tell you who you are in Christ and what Christ has done for you. And why do we want to hammer him for that? When he's telling you exactly what God's told you. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Listen, he doesn't have the personality to be mean. He doesn't have the personality to preach condemnation and guilt on you all the time. Come on, y'all, anybody, y'all waking up in there, I want money. And we want to say, oh, that Joel Osteen, he he won't even, he's not going to condemn you. He's not going to condemn you. He doesn't care. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care what you've done. He doesn't care how bad you've messed up. He, He don't care. He's just going to tell you how wonderful life is if you'll follow Christ and we want to bash him for that I can't do it I'm not going to I can't stand by and listen to him do that which is probably why they don't invite me back to their pastoral meetings around here anymore but I'm just telling you it's just ridiculous somebody has got to start reading their Bible. And all these little words that we, scriptures that we say all the time, we need to study them out. He don't, Marvin. <laughs> See, he is saved. Because when he, after his accident, he said, get it out of your, he just said it. You did so good, Marvin. Get it out of wherever it is. <laughs> People know where their head's at, Marvin. (laughs) 
In the sand, that's right. <laughs> Verse, look at Matthew 19 real quick. I got one minute, 30 seconds. I'm going to use every bit of it. Matthew 19. Then Peter answered and said to him, Behold, we've left everything and followed you. What then will there be for us? You know, he's perplexed here at that question at that what Jesus told him. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you that you who have followed me in the regeneration... in the regeneration. Come on. You who follow me in that re in regeneration, in that molding, in that making, in that squeezing, you'll receive it all back. You, you're willing to work on... Look, Peter... How many times did Jesus hammer Peter? <laughs> Let me tell you, he's the only person I've ever heard of where Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, looking right at Peter. And Peter didn't get offended. Why? Because he was following. <laughs> oh, man. Can you imagine Jesus looking at you? Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you talking to me? Well, I'm, I'm going down here to First Baptist. <laughs> right? <laughs> you go down there till that preacher offends you. Then you'll go down to the Methodist. You'll go down to, come on, are y'all hearing me now? <laughs> See, at some point, we've got to realize that we're on a path and there's choices that we make that keep us in the good, blessed future, hope. Come on. Listen, don't let the thief rob you, get you exiting where you're the only footprints out there in the sand in the wilderness. Come on, y'all stand. We hope you were blessed by our podcast. If you were impacted by this message, subscribe to our channel so our most recent message will automatically be in your feed. If you would like to help us continue to reach others, you can do so by giving towards our ministry at dcctx.church. Thanks again for listening to the DCC Sermon Podcast.